Hello there and welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello there and welcome to season 11, episode 2 of the Bitcoin Takeover podcast, which focuses on lesser known European and Asian and African projects that fly under the radar. And today we have the Blesco mod. And next to me is Carl Yato, and there's also Chill. They are here because they are the co founders of Blesco mod, which is an ATM in which you insert coins on this side, and you get real money in bits, fractions of Bitcoin. I don't call them Satoshis, you call them whatever you want. So hi guys, how do you do? And what are you doing here in Istanbul presenting this? What's the, what's the grandmaster plan? Are you trying to move the entire economy of Turkey to Bitcoin with these devices? Yes, so th thank you for having us. Uh, first, maybe mention that this is just a, a this is the do-it-yourself project that we have. And we we started to make this 3D printed case basically uh, and prepare a kit because uh, we were doing this workshop in many different conferences around the world. And people were asking us, uh, really, uh, uh, this it's not, it's not properly mounted right now, this, this unit, <laughs> but it's okay. This one is not functional. <laughs> but yeah, so we started recently that one, but we have like a complete uh, f uh, full ATM that takes banknotes and coins. And we are selling that as a product. And we think uh, that Turkey, because of the inflation uh, problem that they are having, it could be a place where our product can help. But I would say, uh, at least for me, the main point to come here to this conference is to meet other other people, related projects, learn from them, uh, share stuff with them, and uh, have fun. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you again uh, for having us here. Uh, we, yeah, we in our in our eShop we sell this now. Um, I think since a week ago, uh, as a kit because uh, there was a, a lot of uh, m many people were asking for this um, because people want uh, an easier way to build their own um, because you know hobby projects, hacker spaces, they want to be able to onboard and educate their local communities about Bitcoin. And so a great way to do that is uh, by having an actual physical thing that lets you just try it. You know, you can put in uh, one coin and you can literally buy Bitcoin with one this. Coin. You can put one coin. One coin. No, not one coin. <laughs> an actual physical coin. <laughs> you can buy Bitcoin with that. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a way to, to onboard people who have never used Bitcoin ever before they just install an application that allows them to use Lightning Network immediately. Uh, there are m several different applications that let you do this. Uh, and they're all compatible because we use LNURL. So it's great. It's a very nice UX for new, new users. Right, so can you walk me through how this works? I know that this is a prototype that was not finalized and you're still working on it, but you insert the coin somewhere in here, right? And you, you get a QR code on the screen and you scan it and that's how you withdraw the Bitcoin. But what is the button for? So can you explain? Yes, so, so you insert coin, you start insert, inserting coin, but you might not insert only one. You might want to insert five, 10, I don't know, 100. So you, once you are done inserting all the coins you want to insert, then you press the button. It, displays you a QR code that you scan with your uh, Lightning wallet that supports LNURL, which most of the Lightning wallet nowadays do. And <clears throat> then you... Or you okay. So then ju you just uh, receive the, the money instantaneously in your, in your, in your wallet. Basically, that's the, the way it, it works. And one of the key points of this, uh, bless command in, in, in the whole idea, uh, not only in this model, but in the model that we are selling for already some time, is uh, that it works totally offline. So the ATM is never connected to the internet, which is very, uh, is one problem less that you have to solve. And it, it, it works especially well in places where the internet connection might not be reliable or something. So, yeah. 
Talk about this. <laughs> Talk about this. Okay. Well, this is, as we've said, this is the DIY version. So this is uh, like, a, it just has a coin acceptor. You can retrain it with any coins that you want. So for example, you can just bring this to a conference like this uh, here in Istanbul, and you can train with the coins that you find. You just go to some vendors, you get some coins, and now you can uh, train it with the local currency, and it just takes you a few minutes. And then physical fiat, physical fiat coins, not shit. Well, it is a shit coin, but uh, <laughs> physical fiat coins, and you just retrain it. Uh, and then that's all you have to do. So the machine itself doesn't know anything about exchange rates. It just knows which coins you tell it, which f currency. So you put the fiat currency symbol. Uh, what is it? TRY for Turkish lira. Okay. And then uh, you just tell it uh, here, I'm training this value of coin right now. And then um, now this is the second value by putting in a few more and then so on. So if there's like three coins, three types of coins you just get a few of each train it and you're good to go so within a few minutes you can have a an atm that can sell bitcoin for the local currency so another question that i have for you and it has nothing to do with my vendetta with cold card or whatever but is this open source and if it is open source can i actually grab the code and build my own and sell it or do you have patents for it which restrict me from selling but only let me look at the code? No, so it's it's totally open source, like the firmware, uh, like some of the devices that we bought from other vendors, we even don't know if, if they are, like the ESP32, I think there are some parts, that the microcontroller, but what we have done is everything open source and you can take it, modify, build on top of it, do whatever you want, sell it if you want. And the server that is required to operate the, the ATM is also open source. One, one thing there, uh, yeah, one uh, thing there. Uh, yes, everything's open source. It's open, uh, the, the firmware software, as well as the, there's an open source server. Uh, but the name is obviously trademark, so you can't call yours if you if you build the thing. You don't don't call it Laskomat, call it something else. Uh, but yeah, we're we're really trying to um, give everyone the tools in order to extend and be creative and make their own thing, and of course v verify that what we're doing is legit. So absolutely, it's we believe a lot in open source so that's why we're trying to give back to the community we even write some specs to do uh, for example t for it to be offline uh, we had to we had to do our own thing we extended the LNURL withdraw specification in order to include uh, a little technical HMAC signature it's just basically a way to know whether or not the amount that was entered into the device is tampered with or not so that you because it's the device is offline so it doesn't communicate with the server directly but it it shows the QR code which has the amount in it and obviously you don't want the person the customer to change that right so that's why you use a little bit of cryptograph cri cryptographic magic to prevent that so yeah so how do you manage to keep this offline all the time where is the transaction settled basically what uh, Chil was explaining right now, right? So it's uh, the, the ATM doesn't know anything, but uh, the, the QR code that it displays after you press the button, in, well, you insert money and you press the button, it's, it, this is, uh, so this QR code contains all this uh, information. It contains the, inform the amount that you have inserted and the currency that you have it set up. And it has uh, all this information is signed by a key, a, a private key. Uh, not a private key, but a secret, right? And this secret is shared by the machine and the server, right? So this signature is the proof that the, the users, this machine is, is, is creating this proof that someone, the person that is scanning the QR code, has uh, really input the coins into this machine. So then the wallet, by the LNURL protocol, all these things the user doesn't realize, it's just happening, uh, communicates with the server and the server verifies mm -hmm. that this signature is valid and belongs to a legit uh, ATM, blessed command ATM, and then the server released the payment. So that is the way that uh, he, he was explaining that there is the cryptography that is required to prove that 
it's it's coming from a legit uh, source. So that someone puts re uh, real money or uh, coins inside whatever they want. Voltoro is the exchange where you deal with honest and hard money. There is no fiat on-ramp or off-ramp and you get to diversify your Bitcoin portfolio into gold or silver when you sense that a bearish moment is coming. Also, you can instantly trade your gold for Bitcoin to buy the dip. And if you're into gold custody, Voltoro can also send you the gold that you own directly from their insured Swiss vaulting facilities. Voltoro was launched in the aftermath of the Mt. Gox hack. So since 2015, they have published monthly glass books to prove that they own all the gold reserves and all of their customers' money. Sign up today by going to voltoro.com slash Bitcoin Takeover. Keep in mind that this is not financial advice and you are responsible for your own decisions. Wasabi Wallet is the perfect Bitcoin privacy wallet. It's free, it's open source, it's available on Windows, macOS, and Linux, and it offers groundbreaking Chamian coin joins, which makes your Bitcoin. Even if you do not use the coin join feature, you still benefit from a trustless experience with block filters, a hidden IP address via Tor, and easy management of your wallet outputs. After you deal with KYC exchanges like Coinbase, like Kraken, Binance, Gemini or Bitfinex, you can remove the association between your identity and your Bitcoin address by performing a few rounds of coin joins. To find out more about the privacy benefits and limitations of coin joins, listen to Bitcoin Takeover Podcast Season 6 Episode 6 with Max Hillbrand. And if you want to give Wasabi a try, go to wasabiwallet.io and download the wallet for free. Wasabi Wallet, a Bitcoin privacy wallet for the Citadels. I mean, I know it was a stupid question, but I'm happy that I got the full explanation for how it works. Because it still feels like magic, you know? It's not a hot wallet in the real sense. You can't really, is it a hot wallet? Would you describe it as a hot wallet? Okay, so the device itself, all it has inside is fiat currency, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody steals that, obviously they can steal the money that's inside the machine, but they cannot steal any of your Bitcoin because your Bitcoin lives in, in a hot wallet, Lightning wallet. For now, unfortunately, in Lightning Network, you basically have a hot wallet that is connected at all times to the internet. So that's an extremely, the most hot wallet you can have, right? Uh, so what is recommended is to not have so much in terms of Bitcoin in that hot wallet at a time. So you need to have a little bit of management with your funds to reduce the risk. Uh, or, uh, for example, uh, the server that we have, the Bleskomat server project, open source, is compatible with several different Lightning uh, service providers, LSPs, I believe is the acronym floating around. Uh, for example, there are a few different companies that provide this as a custodial solution. They even connect with your bank account, but we also uh, have integration with l &D directly. So you can run all of your own stuff if you would like to do that, even with Tor. So you can have your own Lightning node behind a Tor hidden service, and the Blaskomat server can talk to that and generate, uh, for example, uh, well, it would pay invoices, uh, and it can also check to see if an invoice was paid or 
eventually, if you want to do the inverse and you want to start you know, generating invoices and be paid through like a, a POS or something, so you can, you can do both, theoretically. You just communicate a with the same point, node. A point of sale. Yes, a point of sale device. Right, exactly. So all of these devices can theoretically be offline and they can communicate uh, uh, indirectly using the customer's device, which is the phone, which is connected to the internet. So they scan the QR code, which has a URL to a web service. The web service is the thing that talks to your node. Something else that I want to know is how did you come up with the name Blescomat? Obviously, it comes from the name of a bancomat, which is the name of a cash machine in some countries. But what does Blesco mean? So uh, we started this project in Czech Republic, and uh, Blesk is the meaning. It means uh, lining in Czech. So it's uh, because it's focused on lining network. Uh, we found this was an interesting name. Um, Mat because it's an automat, no, it's a blesco mat, and I don't know. We've been asking people around, and it looks like people. It, the sound it sounds uh, kind of okay for most of the people, and so this is the the reason. To me, it sounds a bit blasphemous, right? Like blas <laughs> blasphemous banco mat, like a machine from which you take Bitcoin, and it's blasphemous as compared to you know the orthodoxy of the fiat standard. If you prefer that, uh, if you prefer that definition, sure, why not? Yeah. Anyway, it's a very small device. I know that there is one that you're selling. So, can you tell us where people can buy a Blescomat and for how much? Uh, yes. So we have the shop, which is uh, blescomat.com. You can go there, and there is a link to the shop. So the shop is shop. Uh, dot blesscomat dot com, and there we have uh, these kits. We have also the the the, the, the complete ATM that we are selling. Uh, the kits we are selling ab around one one hundred seventy five uh, euros mm -hmm. with the uh, case and all the components. And we are including also a subscription, a one year subscription to our blesscomat uh, platform which is basically the Blescomat server, but with uh, accounts for users and so on. So the user basically, they can run their own server and everything, but we assume that there are people that they either don't have the time, don't have the skills, and they, we can help them by providing the server. And even in any way, that server never has the custody of any funds. So you just connect it to your node or to other third party lining service provider. So uh, yes. And that's it. Uh, yeah. I guess you've also answered my question about how you make money with this project because you know you sell this device. You're not making much money from the hardware itself, but you are making money from the service that you are providing with the server. Uh, we also sell a full version uh, machine that's made in iron. Uh, yeah. Iron and it's a uh, handmade, actually uh, artisanally crafted uh, ATMs, uh, and they are larger than this. They accept bills. Uh, they even have a, a stackable um, container, uh, so you can have up to three hundred banknotes at a time. So it's a bit more secure. Obviously, this is just plastic. Uh, so, yeah, that's plastic. Uh, so, th but this is just for hobby. This one, so it's for people to learn and to share and something that's uh, a bit less expensive. So the, the full, full version is a bit more secure uh, and it's intended more for like a restaurant or a food truck or festival. Um, as we said, it's offline, even that one. So it, it's quite easy to operate. You don't really need to worry about uh, a lot of the problems when you, when you deal with ATMs and you're moving around, you, you're worried about selling food or coffee or something, right? You don't need to worry about this thing having an internet connection. Um, you could even theoretically, because it's 12 volt, you could run it off of a car or uh, a battery. Would be pretty okay. We don't we don't sell that portion yet, but you know things take time, and maybe eventually we'll try to have some uh, other additional accessories or some something for that. So while I was upstairs, I've heard you talk about some other cash machine with lightning. And you said that that one uses the Raspberry Pi and this one uses an STM32 chip. 
Can you explain in a nutshell what the difference is and why it's better to use that kind of microcontroller as opposed to Raspberry Pi? Uh, yes, there is the, the yeah. So go on. Yeah, th there is that. Uh, th that, that, that I, 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 I'm not saying that this uh, better or worse, different. And basically, we started the project the first time we have a Raspberry Pi there, and it was. Uh, the whole thing was very complex. It has a camera and so so on. But then we discovered ESP32, which is I think is different than the one that you mentioned. And it's way simpler because it, you don't need to have an operating system running and it just you just flash the firmware. And we believe that simplicity is uh, more reliable. Uh, that's why we also try to remove the Wi-Fi or internet connection. So the as, we like simplicity, like the simple, the most simple, the most reliable, and the less error you are going to have. So uh, the, the microcontroller approach that we have taken here, it's uh, in that sense, it's simpler, and it also consumes less less energy. But maybe that that's not not the issue unless you run it off on batteries or something. It's different approaches to solve the same problem, but I don't know. We have tried. We have gone this this way because uh, we believe that uh, it 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 fits uh, kind of uh, better for us. It's the same one think? that you find in the Trezor, right? So, is it the same microcontroller that you find in the Trezor hardware wallets? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's 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 it's, it's totally different. This actually comes. It has a uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and uh, possibilities, but we don't use it. But no, it's, it, it, it has nothing to do with the, with the one in the Trezor. So what you're saying is that you're using a simpler chip, which fulfills this very specific task, as opposed to something using more complex that may have some other security flaws, like just because it has a larger attack surface, right? OK, yeah, uh, that's. Yeah, that's not uh, the primary purpose for for using an ESP32. Uh, I would say it's the power consumption. The um, it's 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 a less expensive chip for sure. So it would be yeah. It, it, but the ESP32 is a very nice um, development because the STM I think is what you mentioned earlier, but that had a lot of difficulties. Uh, it's the same concept: microcontroller, C plus plus, or C. But there were a lot of uh, difficulties working with it, a bit uh, less stable. ESP32 is very stable. Uh, there's huge development um, around it, uh, around the world. Uh, there, it's basically a commodity chip. It's everywhere. Many people are using it. A lot of projects, open source, available. So, I think there there are nice um, uh, like the Arduino IDE. Uh, it's very popular among the hackers here. Uh, we use Platform IO. Um, and we use uh, basically the lower level tools to flash the firmware and compile. So the, the, the tooling is very nice. Um, it's a bit lower level than a, than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi would be more like you use Python and you, you have a full like a graphic user interface. Um, so there's a lot more in the stack. So yes, security could be an issue, but the way we've designed this uh, ATM is that even if the device itself is compromised, what is it going to do? It can't steal your Bitcoin, basically. I mean, y you can maybe try to uh, extract the, the, the secret key, but again, the Bitcoin is not in the device. The, de the device doesn't have Bitcoin. It's on the server. So you can at any time delete the key from the server and or disable it, and it can no longer spend any of your funds or in your Lightning service provider. So. That's where the, the, the security is the main concern. Yeah, so basically the main attack vector for one of these devices is like in Terminator 2. I'm not sure if you remember that scene where T2 punched that public phone just to grab some coins and make a call. Yeah, so I, I guess if, you know, if the Terminator comes <laughs> from the future to prevent Skynet from ever forming, I guess he can break into your Blesco mod, but otherwise he cannot take any Bitcoin. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So physical security. 
Right. So physical security is still a concern. But again, these are designed for supervision, especially the DIY version. You're just going to keep it with you. It's small. So you just take it with you. You show it around. You take a few coins and you put the coins in your pocket after. It's, uh, the, and the bigger one, it again, is not meant to be unsupervised. You don't want to expose it outside alone. Um, because, again, somebody could just steal it. It's about eight kilograms. It's not hard to just walk away with. Uh, but uh, nothing is secure if you have physical access. So it's... Sorry. Sorry. So basically, yes, what I wanted to say is like the, the, the security model of the big one is, uh, is based on the... Cash register of a uh, li li like the same level of security as a cash register in a restaurant or a coffee shop or something like that. Okay, that's useful to know. Something else that I want to ask you concerns laws and regulations, and these are basically so you are. Well, I'm talking about the big one, right? If I buy it and I run it in my hometown, for example, I just leave it somewhere so people can get some Bitcoin with their cash. I mean, I can imagine that I'm going to run into problems with the police at some point. So even if nobody steals from it. So is there a workaround that? Or did you consider what can happen or how you can help people not have problem with the law for running one of these Blescomats? You mean like uh, because you are operating a Bitcoin ATM, you can have uh, you could have uh, legal problems. Yeah. Or, or yeah. So basically, for us, it's very it, we try to be updated, but it's very difficult because legislation uh, changes across countries. Uh, they are arbitrary, so <laughs> every day change uh, in in every sense. So we, uh, but in our experience, there are not many issues, at least in the European countries, and I think like in in Latin American countries where we we had some also contacts. Uh, there is no issue that such a such like in such a uh, cases and <clears throat> in most of the cases you just have to report the benefits so if you are selling the the bitcoins and you have a percentage uh, you have a fee so you you get some money so because you are making money and then this is a business you the state usually uh, ask you to to pay the but I don't know whatever percentage in, in different countries. So you pay taxes and then it, in most of the places it's fine. There are so far no issues, but all this is changing constantly. So it's very difficult to be updated. So if someone is doing it and it's uh, going to do it bigger or something, they probably could have a better uh, legal advice from some their advisors or tax advisor or something. So in regards to the Bitcoin price, does how often does it get updated? Because I imagine that, let's say that something happens and there's a dip of 10%, and you're actually going to get ripped off because if it doesn't get updated in real time, you can actually sell Bitcoin for a price which is no longer advantageous. Like you're not really making any kind of profit out of it. So is there any way to mitigate that? So the device is offline. It doesn't know anything about exchange rates. All it knows is the amount of fiat that you put in. The server itself is the one that checks the exchange rate, and it does so in real time. So as soon as there is a, a customer who comes and scans a QR code and tries to use it to redeem Bitcoin, the server does the calculation in that moment. So it doesn't matter what the exchange rate is doing. Uh, it's always going to match the market rate. Uh, and then your fee, of course, whatever you decide to set your fee to. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think my last question for you is, how can people follow this project? And how would you advise them to pursue this goal of setting up a Bitcoin ATM for events, conferences? Like, you think it's a good idea to buy one or build one themselves? Uh, so basically, yes, they can follow the project. Mm, we try to be some active uh, on Twitter at Blescomat, and we have the our web website uh, blescomat.com. And then I think both of the devices, like this 
do-it-yourself one and the big one in the meta case with the banknote acceptor as well, both serve different purposes, right? So if you, the do-it-yourself, if you are trying to, you are a Bitcoin enthusiast and you want to do education or you want to show basically your family members that you are talking to them about Bitcoin every time and but you are talking about something abstract. When you show them, like you put here some coins, it displays you a QR code, you scan it and you get money in your phone, then they see it in action, they see how fast it is, you see it, and uh, it's different. So you are, you have a tool to explain what, what, whatever you are feeling that the, you want to share with your friends, call it at, at the office, in the hacker space, whatever. And the other one, the big one, it's more if you are having a a cafeteria or a restaurant or something and you are trying to sell bitcoins and make a profit out of it out of it at the same time you are you are giving people the opportunity to buy bitcoin in your in your in your place and okay thank you guys and good luck with your project i look forward to your presentation on how this works because there's a demo in like 30 minutes no it's in 10 so we we should head there so thank you very much Thank you. Voltoro is the exchange where you deal with honest and hard money. There is no fiat on-ramp or off-ramp and you get to diversify your Bitcoin portfolio into gold or silver when you sense that a bearish moment is coming. Also, you can instantly trade your gold for Bitcoin to buy the dip. And if you're into gold custody, Voltoro can also send you the gold that you own directly from their insured Swiss vaulting facilities. Voltoro was launched in the aftermath of the Mt. Gox hack. So since 2015, they have published monthly glass books to prove that they own all the gold reserves and all of their customers' money. Sign up today by going to voltoro.com slash Bitcoin Takeover. Keep in mind that this is not financial advice and you are responsible for your own decisions. Wasabi Wallet is the perfect Bitcoin privacy wallet. It's free, it's open source, it's available on Windows, macOS, and Linux, and it offers groundbreaking Chamian coin joins, which makes your Bitcoin. Even if you do not use the coin join feature, you still benefit from a trustless experience with block filters, a hidden IP address via Tor, and easy management of your wallet outputs. After you deal with KYC exchanges like Coinbase, like Kraken, Binance, Gemini or Bitfinex, you can remove the association between your identity and your Bitcoin address by performing a few rounds of coin joins. To find out more about the privacy benefits and limitations of coin joins, listen to Bitcoin Takeover Podcast Season 6 Episode 6 with Max Hillbrand. And if you want to give Wasabi a try, go to wasabiwallet.io and download the wallet for free. Wasabi Wallet, a Bitcoin privacy wallet for the citadels.